Hey guys, um, I had a pretty cool experience at the comic book shop. Uh, one, of, one of the main things is that one of the uh, shops that I go to is called Nan's Comics and Toys. And it is the stereotype of a comic book shop um, in a good way, in a good way. Because um, the guys working there are, you can, they're older, right? Uh, one of, I, he's got to be the owner or if not like the, the store manager that's been there for like 40 years or something because the guy has got to be in his, I don't, know, I don't know, man. He's got to be in his late 60s, early 70s. His hair is like snow white with snow white beard and everything. Uh, I saw him and he was wearing like a Nexus t-shirt, which if you haven't heard of Nexus before, check out one of my videos. It's a dope comic from the 80s. Um, the shop actually has like eight omnibi there, just like volume omnibus one to eight, I think. But yeah, we were talking about just the state of comics and just certain things DC and both Marvel are doing. And we, we had to agree um, that Marvel is just doing particular things that just don't make sense. And we brought up the fact that how so many of their stories are just getting canceled. Uh, so many things are selling poorly. Like he brought up that one of the owners, he was like... He, I don't think Squirrel Girl's for me. And I was like, I don't think Squirrel Girl's for anybody. And we both had degrees. Like, yeah. He says, yeah, it's pretty trash. And we were talking about Captain Mar Marvel. And he says, Captain Marvel's a horrible book. It does not sell. Those books don't sell. Um, things with DC. We, I respect Christopher Priest as a writer. And one of the, the owner there, he's like, I love Christopher Priest. He said his, you know, he was saying his Black Panther run was amazing. But his stuff does not sell. He said Deathstroke does poorly. He's like Justice League is Justice League does not move off the shelf. And we, we, we had to just just be honest about how DC isn't using particular characters or bringing them back. And how Marvel, frankly, we spent a good time saying how Marvel just hates marriages and relationships. Uh, he, he made a point, you know, he was saying, yeah, man, he says there's, they don't want to use it because there's apparently no drama or nothing you can do with people in marriages. And he was saying, he's like, man, I've been married three times. Believe me, I've dealt with plenty of drama in my marriages, man. He says they just don't know how to write these things. And I, I brought up the fact how image had really cool art and they said, yeah, but art's important, but does it have a good story? How are the characters? Uh, you know, and we, we were talking about this and it was actually kind of funny because when we, me, uh, the store manager and uh, I think the owner there or, you know, senior owner manager or whatever, uh, who's also really cool. We were talking and one of the guys is kind of like looking through books on the bookshelf uh, over near the trades and is kind of like peeking his head out, you know, periodically peeking his head out. And then he's like kind of walked up, was looking at some books and then walked up. And we were standing in the front of the counter, and it was a pretty chill day. There was, like, a couple people in there, and, he's, and we were just like, oh, sorry, did we, are we interrupting something? He's like, nah, man, I just want to listen to what y'all are talking about. So it was, it's cool to have conversations like that in a, in a shop. And we were saying how She-Hulk, because I got the John Byrne She-Hulk uh, trade, and, we, you know, the whole collection of all, most of John Byrne's stuff. Some of them were missing because, you know, John Byrne, uh, you know, whatever. John Burns, John Byrne. So we were talking about how She-Hulk's not the same, how we were saying that they just get people that don't understand the characters, and when the books get canceled, they just, you know, it hurts the comic book shops. We were talking about how there's a lack of cyberpunk stuff, period, and the guy looked at me, and he started thinking, he's like, well, there is, uh, he says, well, there's this comic, and I was like, yeah. And there was this comic. I think there were some in the 90s. I can't remember the names of them. And I said, yeah, exactly. That's that's how bad it is. You actually have to really try to count. You could probably count on one hand if you're excluding manga. And he's like, yeah, you got a good point. And we were just saying how X-Men has just not been the same. And we were talking about like how cool it would be if they brought back Power Girl and did She-Hulk right in certain characters. And... One of the, the, the store manager, uh, who's like, you know, OG, right? He's an OG comic book reader with his Nexus t-shirt. He was like, but would the characters be the same? And I had to think about it. And the store, uh, the other store manager was like, well, 
She-Hulk was really good in John Byrne's run. I said, yeah, but the 2005 stuff wasn't that great. And he's like, yeah, it just wasn't the same. And we were just thinking, as much as we would love to have certain characters come back, it's almost kind of like a catch-22, you know? It's like, if you get these characters back, are they going to be the same? Are they going to be good? Um, Tiny Essie Coats makes retailers nervous. There are books that they just said just don't sh- sell. A lot of Marvel stuff just not selling that they just don't order anymore. And I said, you know, it's crazy. I just get the old trades with like Hunter Killer and Cyber Force. And they were just like, yeah, we know that. We, we know all about those. But we were saying how, yeah, we want good art. But they also mentioned the fact that, yeah, covers are nice, pretty art. But he said the stuff at Image during that time, you didn't have the internet like that. So this was just like a feast for your, you know for your eyes, all this cool stuff. But people can go online and look at the art that they want. So you have to have more. And we were talking about just the increasing pricing of comics. And the re- I mean, when you have a retailer telling you this, he's like, man, if a comic's five bucks, that better be the best comic ever to be spending that much money. Because when you start raising prices, people expect more, which they should. If you're going to pay more, you expect more from the comic. So this is an abbreviated, really shortened down because like this is like the I've recorded this thing a couple times trying to trim down to like a smaller format, smaller video. But yeah, guys, have you had cool conversations like this with the retailers at your shop um, or any experiences? Uh, comment, like, uh, and you know, let me know what you think down below. And if you could share this video on Twitter or whatever uh, social media you have, and. Uh, Like, comment, subscribe, and I will catch you on the next.